from 3D printing parts for medical procedures to designing medical diagnostic devices for emerging markets, manufacturing is going as high-tech as an industry can get. But at the center of all of this technology is people. This is a story about how a giant manufacturing company, in close partnership with San Jose State University, created an impactful way to find the talent it needed. But the story doesn't end there. The rich diversity of the San Jose State University students participating in this program translates to a more diverse and inclusive high-tech workforce for the city of San Jose and beyond. Best of all, this program is changing lives. JABO's partnership with the city of San Jose has been incredible, and more importantly, their partnership with the entire community. Through the San Jose Works program, we have many first-generation young students living in gang-impacted neighborhoods who are being provided their first job at a driving industry company by JABO. Uh, these are often summer jobs, in some cases permanent jobs, and these kids are getting an incredible opportunity to see uh, how the innovative economy works and the experience to have relationships with mentors at a great company like Jabel who can help steer them along, whether it's to college or another path. And that opportunity has been incredible for us, and we're grateful for Jabel's leadership. They've been a partner to the entire community in other ways as well. Um, the partnership between Jabel and San Jose State University is particularly unique. There's a definition that came out of some researchers at Harvard where they talk about 2D diversity where you have inherent and acquired diversity and San Jose students, San Jose State students have, um, have both. So, you know, inherent's kind of what you come with in, in terms of racial, ethnic, or gender diversity and then acquired is from your work and life experience and, you know, companies that have more of both kinds of diversity are shown to outperform and so in that sense our San Jose State students are, are really desirable. They're from a certain range of, of society. So if we think about products that are going to be important for helping people either in the United States or in other parts of the world, our students represent the people for whom the products could be designed for. You know, they're not the 1%, they're the 99%. And, and so they're going to have a lot to bring to a table when they talk about product design that I think is going to be important for the success of whatever the new products to emerge are going to be. So I'm working in microfluidics, which is basically lab on disk technology. Um, that's a continuation of my senior project, actually. So basically, lab on disk is point of care diagnostic testing, and we want to take those to third world countries. Um, so we could do diagnostic testings for in places where the infrastructure doesn't really allow for testing of certain diseases. And I think that's pretty huge um, to be able to take you know, a technology to a place that it's just not the infrastructure is just not there for that to happen, but to do it in a way that doesn't you know, hurt their economy, it doesn't hurt anyone else, it just helps. All you would need to know as the physician over there would be to collect the sample from the patient, put it onto the disc, and read the results. Um, so it's cheap, it's portable. You know, we were even thinking of doing this at um, airports. So when people are coming in from, let's say, countries that are uh, maybe have uh, pandemics or epidemics or something, um, they could come in and we could test them right there. And so I got to work here at Jabel in the Jabel lab as well as the San Jose State lab um, and really do this lab on disk technology. And I was able to actually take that not only from school, but I was able to continue that here at Jabel as an actual project that they're you know, actually pursuing. Seymour Papert, a noted mathematician, computer scientist, an educator who spent most of his career teaching and researching at MIT, was perhaps best known for his strong belief in experiential learning, or learning through doing. In fact, the Ultimate Learning by Doing company, the Lego Group, even borrowed the word Mindstorms from one of Papert's books for its robotics invention system. To quote Seymour Papert, Kids are motivated and inspired to learn when they are using that learning to make something they care about. A teacher's most important role is to provide them with the tools and freedom to make those things. No one embodies this spirit more than San Jose State University professors, Dr. Fred Berez 
and Dr. Guna Salvadore. The current trend in the U.S. and many of the schools is the fact that companies are not interested in four-point GPA students. They are interested in people who have hands-on experience. So one of the things that I do at San Jose State University is to develop courses that are current in terms of what the needs of industry is all about, as well as the hands-on experience. Upon their graduation, they can go and become productive at the company. Record also shows that a company would love to hire somebody that has internship. Our students have the opportunity to work in industry as an intern, and that opens up tremendous opportunity for them to seek employment upon graduation. We strongly support and encourage our students to get involved with industry type projects, and Jabil has been one of the most successful company in giving us the opportunity so that we can have that collaboration. I remember over the past few years, Jabil has been kind enough to entertain as many as 30 to 40 students from San Jose State University in a variety of projects there. So the students who are working on the Jabil project are serving two masters at the same time. You know, they have an advisor on campus here, people like me that they dread, <laughs> and they have uh, advisors at Jabil, who I think are a lot nicer than I am but are still equally demanding, and I want them to be equally demanding uh, because students, a lot of times, rise. They're, they're very capable, but they don't know how high they can go. The higher we push, we find out they can go even higher. I was fortunate enough to work with, uh, in the first year, a young man named Harjeet, and he came in pretty wide-eyed pretty scared about what was going on and I think he'd tell you today that probably the first two weeks, maybe month that we worked on it, he really didn't know what was going on. He didn't know what to do. I remember walking in through these, through these doors here in the front and I had no idea what Jable was. I didn't know what they did. Uh, I just knew that they're, they made stuff for uh, other companies. And walking in here, it was kind of intimidating seeing the lab for the first time and everybody wearing their smocks, right? That was very intimidating. But when I started doing the actual project and I walked into a lab and like as a new kid, I don't know where anything is. So what I would do is I would just approach one person and be like, hey, um, do you know where I can find gloves? Like something simple. And what I was thinking was going to happen, the reaction I was going to get was, uh, I don't know, kid, go figure it out. But instead it was, hey, let me show you, hey, what are you working on? Uh, here, why don't you do it this way? Have you learned how to do this? There's so much advice and so much like love, you know, that was given. And from that, like, I just felt so welcome. So he stayed late one night waiting for me to finish up some work. And then he's just standing there waiting to talk to me. And we sat down for two or three hours, talked about life, talked about his education. Uh, it was just really fun to see him just dive in. Once he learned that first machine, and he started peeling back that onion and saying, I can learn this one and I can learn that one. And then next thing you know, Harjeet was getting pulled into all kinds of projects. When I got done with my senior project, uh, my boss uh, came up to me and was like, hey, do you want an internship opportunity? But he said that there's one condition and you have to go to grad school. And for me, this was about a month or two before graduating uh, with my bachelor's degree. I wasn't thinking about going to grad school at all. I just wanted a job. I didn't know where, I didn't know what I wanted to do, I didn't know what to expect. I just knew I just wanted something. Uh, and it wasn't until the actual internship that I like, was like, okay, this is where I want to head down. This is what I want to pursue. I noticed that now when I go into school and I sit in a class, like materials engineering is a lot of characterization. So we talk about a lot of techniques. And now it's when the professor says, oh, this technique is good for contamination. And I start engaging with my professor more I learn more and then I take that information, I come back to Jable and I say, hey, you know, for this issue, why don't we look into this machine? You know, and that's how the grad school is really helping me in my actual career here at Jable. And then now one of my internal projects is being a mentor. So I have my own San Jose State students right now and we're working um, on a, a adhesive characterization for flexible electronics. So I, I think it's really cool how like I started off as uh, a, a, a mentee in, in this Jable project with uh, San Jose State and now I'm actually the mentor and I get to teach these students what I learned and help them get to where I am today. You know when these kids came over to Jable they were just young students that were lost in the world 
didn't know really why they were going to school. And now you've got a young man now that is focused and he has a direction and now we can't stop him. The students that participate in this program are smart, driven, and focused, but one of the things that truly shines through is the sense of achievement that is palpable when you talk with these young people. You really get a sense for how much they've grown as they progress from intern to full-time employee taking the lead. Many of our students work, uh, and they worked maybe non-technical jobs, but maybe they're hanging drywall or they're working in a restaurant, and so it gives them a little bit more innate interest in, in just trying to have that kind of a learning experience while they're here. They're not really about 100% about book learning. And so then when they get an opportunity to work for a company like Jabil, uh, it just allows them to carry what they're learning in the classroom onto the work site and then to carry the work experience back into the classroom. And so it ends up enriching the experience for all the students. I actually got my uh, internship here because of uh, San Jose State through uh, Dr. Fred Perez and then followed that up with years of being an intern while still going to school and then got a job as a mechanical engineer. This year my group is focused on heat exchangers um, and within that we've also kind of given them the challenge of uh, incorporating 3D metal printing and we sort of brainstormed what are the applications for heat exchangers involving metal 3D printing, keeping in mind the economic viability of whatever we come up with um, and then one of the students was reading research papers and they came across a, um, a bone drill bit. So uh, when you're drilling, uh, this one was a cranial drill bit, so when they're drilling into your skull um, to do surgery, uh, the, the bit gets hot um, and sometimes they can't irrigate it. So what that means is they just pour water over it to keep it cool. Um, but you don't necessarily want water in the surgery. That was super interesting to my students. and. Um, they did some market research and there's actually a, quite a large market for biosurgery drill bits, not necessarily bone, but also other applications that might need cooling. So um, right now we're planning on uh, designing a bone drilling bit, modeling it um, in a CAD modeling software. We're also planning on making it in our 3D metal printer, sharpening it and then testing it on actual bone. So we, we keep it interesting for their majors, but at the same time, it's the real world. They have to work with other groups. They can't do everything themselves. Um, so when they get into the real world, they're prepared. Going back to Seymour Papert's thoughts on connecting young people with the things they care about, one of the very key outcomes of this partnership is aligning student passions with meaningful hands-on experience. For Corey Smith, this was an almost unbelievable opportunity that he didn't even know existed until he learned about Jabil. How I found the job at Jabil was through my best friend, Colton Farrar. And uh, I had been building computers on the side for quite some time, teaching classes about overclocking and, and assembling these computers. And it was a definite interest of me. And uh, my best friend Colton got a job here at Jabil and uh, he told me what he was doing and I kind of couldn't believe him that he was uh, assembling these PCB boards that I was spending all this time with uh, installing, overclocking, and really enjoying. And so when he told me about the job, I, I bugged him a lot. I had to have the same job. I, I wanted the opportunity. I didn't want to just see Jable. I wanted to be part of Jable because it sounded so cool to me. And um, he managed to get me an interview with Quinn here at, at Jable. And uh, a couple months later, I had the job. And it's been really fun because now I get to actually see these, these PCB boards actually being assembled and be a big part of it as well, actually running the assemblies at times too. When you actually work at Jabil and you see all the work that goes behind the com component selection, the assembly process, uh, profiling these boards so that they're assembled and reflowed properly, you really appreciate all the time and work that goes into the engineering behind the board. And it's just simply amazing to see it done in person. We're thrilled that Jabil continues uh, to promote this partnership with San Jose State University, which happens to be the source of more computer scientists and engineers than any other university in the Bay Area for our Silicon Valley. And uh, we want to continue to grow partnerships like this with other companies, using Jabil as the example. 
Uh, Jabo, of course, benefits because we know that the talent pipeline, uh, whether it's for engineers, computer science, or anything else in this valley is far too narrow. We want to broaden the diversity of that pipeline. Uh, it's a great benefit to our community as Jabo works to help us broaden that pipeline, but it's a great benefit to Jabo as well uh, as they train their next generation of leading engineers. Harjeet, Meha, Corey, and Ross are just a few of the dozens of students who came to Jabel through the San Jose State University program. Their stories are a testament to the incredible power of diversity to bring new ideas to the world. And this story is just the beginning, as these students find they can soar higher than they ever thought possible as they are learning to fly.